We are back with number 61 through 65 of my top 100 records of all time. Really excited to share these picks with you. If you are not familiar with this series, go to the description. We have all the previous episodes as well as the video explaining what I'm doing. So strap in and get ready for some more picks. <laughs> Number 65, M83, Hurry Up, We're Dreaming. It is hard to imagine better synth pop than this record. M83 has gone through a lot of sonic iterations. It started off with some ambient and shoegaze sounds, but they eventually morphed into this amazing synth pop band. Hurry Up, We're Dreaming expands on the sonic palette that they kind of started off with on the previous album, Saturdays Equals Youth. It's like they said, we want to take our intimate music and start playing arenas, and then they did it. Some of the music has some post-rock progressions with slow burns and builds and then explosions of sound. And songs like Midnight City and Steve McQueen show their most bombastic and punchy selves. A little bit Pink Floyd, a little bit New Order, and a little bit of Sigur Rós. The combination of these influences makes M83 something that should definitely be on your list. So much heart and soul, this sprawling hour and 13 minute album is good to the last note. This right here is the recent limited color repress. It has two different colors, of course, to match the color of the cover. One is this kind of blue with smoke, and the other, which matches this as well, is, as you can guess, pink with smoke. I think the colors match the music and the cover, the aesthetic overall for this album, it's just so good. Number 64, Daft Punk Discovery. This is one of the best disco-inspired electronic albums of all time. It's hard to argue that. Those French robots known as Daft Punk are absolute geniuses, and while I have a lot of love for the rest of their catalog, especially Ram, this is their magnum opus. Containing some of their biggest songs like Digital Love, Around the World, and Harder, Better, Faster, Stronger, the pop songs on this record are perfect. But then there's some underrated songs like Aerodynamic and Crescendals that occupy the space that those mega hits don't. And there's room for some beautiful emotive tracks like Something About Us that take you by surprise. There's something magical about Daft Punk and this record in particular, whether it's the mythos of who they are behind the masks or the journey leading up to what they became or their legendary live shows, of which I didn't get to go to either of their colossal tours, Alive 1997 and Alive 2007 really bummed about that. I just think this album is so special and every time I listen to it it reminds me of why this is considered to be one of the best albums of all time for many people. It's just so much fun. It's just a fun record. Nice gatefold in the middle and it's just a black variant. There is unfortunately no colored vinyl for this. I feel like they could do some kind of like clear with rainbow splatter to match these letters but it's not my choice, unfortunately. There is a limited Japanese version that has an obi strip, an alternate art from the movie Interstellar 5555, uh, which I would like to find one day, but you usually find that for over $500 when it pops up in good condition. Number 63, Spoon, ga 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 ga. The first time I ever heard Spoon was in an episode of The O.C., which is a show I will defend to this day. It is incredible. The song was The Way We Get By by their album Kill the Moonlight, which was years before this one. It turned me into a fan, so when The Underdog started getting play as I was graduating high school, which was the lead single from this record, I decided to check out the record as a whole, and I was floored. I dove headfirst into this album, which is Spoon's magnum opus in my opinion, and wow, when I think of indie rock, especially in like the mid-2000s, Spoon is one of the first names that comes to mind. They're ridiculously consistent as a band. Almost every one of their records is great and worth listening to, but they are rarely as crunchy, gritty, sharp-tongued, and enchanting as they are on this record. Every song oozes cool confidence until the unexpectedly intense closer, Black Like Me. I have the expanded version of this record with some extra tracks from an EP around this era, but my favorite version, visually, is the Newberry Comics variant, which is on a really nice red kind of smoky, dark red smoky variant, which I think matches the cover pretty nicely with the red letters and then the black tones on the white. So this is an album that everyone should own in their collection, variant or not. Number 62, Kings of Convenience, Riot on an Empty Street. Kings of Convenience is the closest thing that we get in the 2000s to a new Simon and Garfunkel album, especially the first track, Homesick. The recording of the vocals on this album are grippingly personal and you can hear every breath, sigh, and saliva click as they sing. Plus, the harmonies are otherworldly, and they warm my heart every time. With a healthy dose of Bossa Nova influence from Brazil, this album really does check every box for me, and I wish there were more records by this band. They individually have some other projects on the side, which are very good as well, the most notably being Erland Oi, who I'm sure I've mispronounced his name, The Whitest Boy Alive, which is a little dancier than this project, 
but still pretty intimate. Regardless, Kings of Convenience is their crown jewel. This album just edged out their first record, Quiet Is The New Loud, mostly because of that first track, which might be in my top 20 songs of all time. Also on this record, they have some beautiful collaborations with Feist, and every single day, I hope for a full album between the three of them. I heard they're putting out new music soon, which is extremely exciting, and if they do, they better tour, because I need to see them live. I tracked down the original Source Pressings, uh, which were the overseas pressings, really nice sturdy jacket. They sound exceptional. I have the represses, and they sound good too, and they look cool because they're colored vinyl, but I would confidently say that these original pressings blow them out of the water. Number 61, Sufjan Stevens, The Age of Odds. Ah, Sufjan Stevens' first appearance on this list. I'm gonna say probably not his last. Sufjan experimented with electronics before in his career, early on with Enjoy Your Rabbit, which was an experimental electronic album that was inspired by the Chinese Zodiac. Nine years and three classic folk albums later, he returns to that experimental electronic sound in a much more realized and digestible way. Michigan was a taste of what was to come on the orchestral folk masterpiece, Illinois, and Seven Swans was a little more stripped back and bridged those two albums. Needless to say, the world was not expecting what Sufjan brought on Age of Odds. Dividing his fan base, a lot of them didn't really appreciate the experimental electronic direction he took. They really wanted Illinois too, which I understand, but I think this is something extremely special in its own right. I remember the first time I heard the first single, Too Much, it was unexpected but undeniably catchy. It was indelibly Sufjan, and an exciting look as to what sounds we had to look forward to on this record. Glitchy synths and uncanny noises fill the spaces that aren't occupied by Sufjan's buttery vocals, oftentimes droning over choral harmonies and looping lyrics. The intro track, Feudal Devices, is one of Sufjan's most beautiful songs, and truthfully, doesn't quite set the tone for the ridiculous space synth opera that your ears are about to embark on. The final song, Impossible Soul, is a 25 minute journey that manages to be captivating every single moment. Which is crazy if you think about it. That's almost the length of an EP in itself. This is a true testament to Sufjan's talent. He is a legitimate genius and we are incredibly lucky to be living in the lifetime where he's putting out music. I wonder if his next record is going to be more like Age of Odds, since we did have something a little more like his classic sound on Carrie and Lowell. We will see. There's the boy. There's the Suf. And yeah, just his art is always so fascinating to me. I love this record. All right, guys, that is my next installment of this series. If you liked it, please make sure you like the video, leave a comment with your thoughts on my picks, and know there's gonna be a lot more coming soon, so make sure you're subscribed and you turn notifications on so you don't miss out on any videos I put out. Thank you for watching, guys. More soon. Take it easy.